Christians. And so uh, and basically when, when I got down there uh, just before Thanksgiving, um, uh, the nursing people down there, they basically had dad pretty much in a medically induced coma at the time. And uh, they said it's time to just let him pass. So, uh, you know, we, uh, and I went down and I said, well, I don't think anybody knows my father better than me. I said, I'll, I'll make that decision on my own. And, uh, so I took Dad off all his meds, and, and I think about three days later, he started to come out, and, and you could still see there was a little fire in his belly. And uh, but uh, his person, like I said, but when, when they would come to do therapy and all, uh, he would just close his eyes, and he wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, but you know, like I said, fortunately, uh, you know, we got that call from the stem cell company, and uh, like I said, what it's done for us is wonders. And I, uh, I think it was about. Uh, Maybe ten days, two weeks later after that. I mean, like I said, it's and it's intermittent, but uh, yeah. I mean, it's like I said when I was down there during the All Star break, I took five days off, went down and spent with him. Dad was on a tough day. He has to use a walker to get around. He's walking around on a walker, and we're trying to get him to sit. And so there was a chair there. I said, Dad, sit down. It's got your name written all over it. He gets down and looks in the chair like this. No, it doesn't. So, <laughs> and if anybody knows him, I mean, that's his personality. He's the jovial, uh, joking kind of guy. So, uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, and he has his good days and not so good days. But on his good days, yeah, I mean, his personality's there, surviving well. And um, so, like I said, that's, uh, that's how we know uh, Dad's still with us. Uh, in speaking with your, your father ahead of this, this night, has he expressed any concern, any stress at all about, oh, man, I, I don't understand the machinations of dementia, so I'm sorry. But has he expressed any stress about not being ready for the big occasion? And if he isn't ready, per se, does it matter, given everything you've seen? No, I think the only uh, the only people who really matter to is, I guess, would be us as a family, uh, being that uh, all of us up here were proud individuals, and nobody's more proud than my father. And uh, you know, I witnessed a lot of that through the trials and tribulations of his health issues. Uh, you know, I, I, I watched him cry, and uh, you don't see that from Lori House. So not so much as greatly affected him, but um, so uh, so it's important to us. And like I said, we hope there's just a glimmer there. And on a good day, things do get through. I know when he was notified that his, his brother Vic had passed. Uh, you know, he had a little breakdown for about five, ten minutes. So, which for me is, unfortunately, God rest his soul for Vic. But for Dad, it's it's a wonderful thing to see because you know that things are getting through, and uh, so we're uh, uh, we're you know we're hoping and praying that uh, there's a moment. And I know over the past number of years with his dementia, um, as an example, so he was up in Toronto when uh, when I was inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame. And, uh, Two days later, we're all back home, and I gave Dad a call, and I said, Dad, you know, I hope you had a wonderful time, and you know, enjoyed your time in Toronto. And he said, Oh yeah, I did, but there wasn't much going on up there. And he wasn't joking; he had forgotten, and that's it's been that way for a while. So, uh, uh, and it's our job as a family to, uh, you know, to uh, take pictures, um, and when we're with him, to uh, remind him of these events and these wonderful awards. And, uh, you know, and that'll be our job continuing forward. But like I said, my, my biggest hope for him is that he can uh, he can take it in tonight, even for five minutes. It'll be a wonderful event. Yep. A question for Mark and Marty. Uh, how special was that first season in Houston? Not only did your dad come out of retirement to join you and help launch your hockey careers, but he also wrapped up 100 points in that first season. What did that first season mean to you? It was a lot of fun. That I know for sure. Uh, being 19, uh, I think Mark turned 18 that year. Uh, I don't really know if you appreciate it enough because you're young and having a lot of fun and not really concentrating just on hockey. But the, the special part was having seen Gordy evolve from the different kinds of purple to all of a sudden seeing bodies flying around and going, oh my God, stay out of his way. Because uh, Wayne was just in bad practice as it was for the game. <laughs> so when he put those skates on, it was all business. And uh, he had surf rules, and you learned them pretty fast, or you were getting stitches. And it didn't matter if you were on his team or not, or if you were his son or not. I know I almost got scalped a couple of times. 
Good thing I was fast, but it, it was so much fun. And, and, and we had such a great group of guys in Houston. Uh, and Gordy, he's not a, a person that goes in and does a lot of speaking and rah rah stuff. He just you know, leads by example. And he's basically never really told us. He might give you one hint a year on something uh, if you keep continually doing it. Uh, but you know, you're doing it wrong, you should do this. And he had a, a, you know, a special knack for that, you know, how, how guys are following through, why you're missing on that so much. And he would just go over and just give them a little talk in the ear, and they'd try it. And if I told them they wouldn't try it, I'm sure. And if Gordy tells them, then they're going to try it. So uh, it was just so much fun. And then winning the championship uh, was, was great, and just a bonus on everything. So I can't explain it anymore, except for so it was a lot of fun. The only negative part was because uh, I, I was a left winger for uh, for six years on Dad's line, and um, I just remember the first year, and we rarely have ever dumped the puck in it. Dad did not enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it. So if you got the puck, the theory is keep it on your stick. The other team is not going to score. Uh, but every once in a while, the puck would have to go in, and like I said, I had pretty good legs, and I'd get in there first, and I'd be battling for the puck, and the guy would take a pretty good hit. And then maybe two seconds later, well, something would knock the wind out of me. And I kept turning around, and every time it was Dad hitting the guy who hit me. <laughs> and it's pretty hard to tell, it's pretty hard to speak up to your father, but it's hard to speak up to your father when he's already howling the ice, too. So it took me about two, three weeks, and I finally went over and said, Dad, I go, I can take a hit from just about anybody, but I said, you're killing me. <laughs> so just, just wait two, three more seconds. Let me get out of there. Let me come do your dirty work. So, uh, now, like I said before, uh, to me, that year was the most amazing uh, thing that I've ever seen an athlete. I'm talking any sport in the world. Uh, I think we had a chance to watch him every day. He was absolutely phenomenal. And I saw an 18 year old kid. And, uh, just to be there and be a part of it and watch it and practice every day and watch all the things he did. It was, uh, uh, it was really something special.